President, can we start? It's 8, uh, 645. Okay. Greetings and uh, warm welcome to all. Um, the session for today, uh, we're going to start. Uh, before we start uh, the session, a uh, few, yeah. hygiene, few hygiene steps. Um, we would uh, have two eminent speakers today, one uh, as an in hall session and a guest for the lecture session. Um, we would uh, uh, request uh, all participants to ask the question after the speaker uh, completes uh, his session. So if anybody wants to ask any question, uh, you can please post it in the chat box or raise your hand and uh, you can unmute and ask the question. And uh, with that, I would request uh, um, Captain KK Haridas to welcome the gathering and deliver the presidential address. Over to you, President. President, you are on mute. Chief guest of this evening, Sri Rahul Jodi Kumaran, the now speaker, Mr. Magdi Ashraf, respected past presidents, office bearers, MC members, CMA members and family, invited guests, wish you all a warm good evening. On behalf of Team CMA, I welcome you all to the first speaker meet of the new team of CMA Managing Committee. First of all, let me apologize for uh, disturbing your Saturday evening time with family. Since we have to comply with the IMA directives, we have decided to conduct this program uh, on Saturday. In future, we are uh, trying to conduct the program mainly on Tuesday evenings only. So uh, once again, I welcome you all to this uh, program. And I'm thanking you for uh, actively participating in the installation ceremony of the new team on 17th. It was a wonderful program. Uh, due to all your support and uh, blessings, the event went well. And I am also appreciated the programs. And uh, again, in future also, I expect all support from the past president and team, uh, MC, uh, CMA members from same support. I'm not uh, delaying our program since uh, our chief guest is already signed in. Uh, I request uh, our treasurer, uh, Ranjini Umesh, to do the introduction speak. Thank you. Now, uh, President, before that, uh, we will have our in-house speaker. So let me introduce uh, uh, a briefly about uh, Magdi Ashraf. Uh, for all of us here in Kori Code in Malabar, uh, it's a very familiar name, uh, Potafo. A um, couple of young entrepreneurs started the journey of uh, 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 entrepreneurship, looking at the the multinationals like Swiggy and uh, Zomato and stuff and so on. So we are very honored and uh, overwhelmed to have Magdi Ashraf, who is the co-founder and uh, chief operating officer of Potaco today. Uh, he will uh, be able to share uh, his experiences very briefly. And uh, we from CMA would uh, give him all the good luck for his venture. Uh, over to you, Magdi. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Anil, sir. Uh, hope you guys can hear me. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let me... Uh, and sir has already introduced me. My name is Magdi Ashraf. I am co-founder and chief operating officer at Potafo Online uh, Online Delivery. Uh, so back in 2017, a uh, few of us, that uh, we four friends actually come up with, with this idea saying, uh, as sir said, um, the million dollar, billion dollar companies like Uber Eats, Swiggy, Zomato, and we got inspired and we uh, wanted to uh, do something similar. Uh, where we are, uh, we are at the moment. That is, uh, we are currently based in Calicut. Uh, so, as everyone know, in in Kerala, everyone in Kerala know that uh, Calicut is considered as the food capital of Kerala. So, uh, we thought, and there was no better place to start something, uh, Potafo, better than Calicut. So that's how we launched uh, back in 2017. Uh, we launched our mobile application, uh, and we started uh, our trial run from 2017 uh, till 2018 we were doing our trial runs and how we can uh, grow and how we can do all the 
uh, all the service and in a better way. So at the beginning, as uh, to to let people know that it's little irritating for us, but it's uh, easy to uh, un understand people that yeah, like Swiggy. That's how people ask, "What are you doing?" I said, "We are can we are a uh, food delivery platform." Uh, so everyone will be asked. The next question will be like Swiggy. Yeah, uh, we used to say yeah, that's uh, we are like Swiggy. But uh, as time went on, uh, we find something uh, that their business model was not very uh, very welcome by the restaurants or customers uh, around uh, some places so we uh, plan to uh, do some uh, something different and uh, we are doing uh, our business model is in the way that it's very really pleased uh, by the restaurants uh, in Calgary. so that's why we get uh, the uh, what to say the support from kerala hotel and restaurant association and we have all these restaurants exclusive in our platform so uh, from 2017 till like the last lockdown, we were only food delivery uh, platform. Uh, let me just uh, share a screen with you guys and there is nothing much, but sorry, it's, uh, screen sharing is, uh, I think it's stopped by that. No problem, I'll just go uh, with it. So uh, we have, uh, let me talk about- Magda can share yeah. the screen. Yeah, one second. So uh, our platform consists of uh, four customers. We have Android and iOS applications, and uh, we have and also website through which customers can place orders. We provide app for uh, the, our vendors also, that is restaurant as well as mart. That is, uh, we have currently started grocery delivery also. So we have uh, app for them, and we also have delivery uh, partner app for our delivery uh, personnel. And in Calgary, we have uh, one lakh plus. Uh, app downloads at the moment we have one lakh plus customer registrations and uh, we have 300 plus uh, delivery stuff uh, running around a, in Calgary city so as we were uh, as we were i mean uh, competing with the uh, big shots uh, in uh, in Calgary like swiggy zomato we get all the attention we need through press whenever we need a good marketing uh, uh, they were there for to support us or to encourage us with, with all their uh, articles throughout and uh, so uh, moving on, uh, so we start, as I said before, we started with uh, food delivery alone in the beginning. Uh, along with that, three other featured services uh, were on the pipeline. We needed to, we were planning to do grocery delivery and we were also planning to do uh, a new, two more new uh, wings called Potafo Assist as well as Potafo Caterers. Potafo Assist is for booking maintenance service like plumbing, electrical and other services and also Potafo Caterers so that it's a uh, extra revenue for restaurants or catering service uh, providers in, uh, in and around Calgate. So uh, when the lockdown came into effect, we had to uh, launch Potafo Mart uh, sooner uh, before uh, bringing any major update in our application. As we were, uh, uh, we were, uh, I mean, approached by the government authorities like uh, collector and mayor. They asked us to st start grocery delivery also, as it was needed for the customers in a, uh, around Calgary. We so expanded throughout the corporation area, and uh, we started uh, a grocery delivery also. And we are we are moving on to a new new update in our app. And soon, all these four services will be uh, on board in Potafo, and uh, we are planning to take Potafo uh, to a super app, actually. So, uh, moving on, uh, we are competing, uh, as uh, I said before, we are competing with Gizomato, Geomart, Big Basket in Potafo Mart section, and also uh, we'll be competing soon, we'll be competing Urban Clap, House Joy, etc. and Cat and Ninja. There are more platforms uh, in, an, uh, in our competing field. And uh, those who ask why Portafo, why we are doing better than Swiggy or Zomato in Calgate, we are doing around 2,000 plus orders every day in Calgate. We have, uh, as I said, we have 1 lakh plus customer registrations and 300 plus uh, delivery staffs working around Calgate. Why Portafo is preferred by people and restaurants is the, re the reason, as I said before, we restaurant makes more money through our platform. That is, we provide them with higher bill size people uh, without any, without promoting any deep offers. Uh, people, uh, people, uh, genuine and loyal 
customers we are bringing for them and we deliver around seven kilometers around the restaurants as restaurants are happy they are willing to keep customers also happy by keeping the quantity and quality of food and uh, even if in grocery also uh, they they maintain the quantity and quality for us so customers are happy and we and to keep human centered customer support throughout our service from uh, placing the order to uh, delivering the order we are always there for the customer we are human centered customer support we plan to do that in future also when we are expanding to uh, other cities and all so uh, what made potafo uh, which is uh, which it is now is this team where uh, we have actually seven uh, seven people working uh, i mean seven people uh, on this uh, and six of us are for full time working for whatever uh, let me just go through them uh, abdul hasib musa is our ceo what he did uh, for us was uh, very great that uh, during uh, when all other delivery platforms like swiggy zomato are running in uh, at losses right now he worked hard uh, and we, he worked along with our cfo which is aditya ravindran to Uh, keep our company uh, without burning much uh, much uh, much on uh, other things or re revenue leakages and we are actually proud to say that we are we have close break even and we are actually slightly positive at the moment uh, in the profits and uh, uh, myself my i said before myself my guest room and i'm chief operating officer and i i i act as a glue between all these guys actually right now and i also work along with our it team to bring in new things uh, how to implement all this with the customers how to uh, make the ui ux experience better the how to make the service better all that and uh, to say about mohammad rashid which is our chief customer officer and vaishak prashant our chief uh, human resource officer uh, the best Best example is what happened during uh, the lockdown period, the, the, when the pandemic hit. Uh, all we got was uh, uh, instructions from uh, collector to do as much as order you can. You should uh, do all the orders, even even if it is through mobile application or through calls. Or however, it is you have to do all orders. So uh, and all we received was 50 actually 50 passes to uh, run around the city, and we had to use 50, just 50 delivery staffs to. Uh, do about 1000 1500 orders at that time and uh, rashid was very successful in uh, keeping the customers i mean in in calm and uh, let them, letting them know that all the uh, all your orders will be delivered in time don't worry about it you uh, patafo will be along with you uh, with your customers and vaishak was very successful in uh, keeping the uh, delivery staff uh, uh, i mean uh, their 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 uh, their emo their emo emotions were in check uh, actually they were afraid to go out uh, everyone was afraid of uh, getting the covid and so he made sure that uh, potafo is along with them and uh, we have done everything to keep them secure uh, secure and safety for the customers and also the delivery staffs he he encouraged them to work every day and come come out every day and uh, do all the orders and uh, the last person abdul muktadir as i said uh, he he actually works along with me to uh, help me with the operations right now he is heading our potafo mart section and he is uh, he is doing a pretty good job uh, there also so uh, that's about us currently uh, we are in Cali calicut alone and we are trying to expand to other cities in kerala as well as uh, outside kerala we are getting invites from uh, other cities in Ke other outside kerala like mangalore trichy uh, uh, hotel associations are calling us they are very impressed with what we have done along with the kerala hotel association at calicut they have many of us uh, many of them has agreed it's the best way how the restaurants can work along with their food delivery platform so uh, so that uh, that's what we are trying to do now we are trying to bring these uh, four services in our platform along with that we are trying to bring in more investments uh, to expand to other cities in kerala uh, for the first stage so that's about us uh, i have i, I think uh, some of uh, you have al uh, already heard my story i can see some names uh, so i i uh, i think i have good guys uh, so that's all about us thank you Thanks, Magni. Thank you very much. Uh, very impressive. Uh, you know the growth that uh, uh, you guys have achieved in a two-year period uh, is uh, really good. Uh, any questions uh, to Magni before we get on to our next session?
Okay, Magdi, would you would you be staying back? I know that you are not in city, but uh, appreciate if you can also be part of uh, the participant uh, uh, hearing of our uh, guest speaker today. And uh, mm -hmm. if need be, if there are questions, we will uh, pick it up at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be continuing. Actually, I came for my cousin's engagement, and it's over uh, during noon time, so I'll be joining. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Magdi. Uh, now. Um, now we have uh, the lecture session. Uh, our chief guest is already online. Uh, I would request uh, CR engineer Umesh uh, to introduce the chief guest. Over to you, Ranjini. Uh, good evening, all. It's a privilege to introduce uh, Rahul Jyoti Kumaran, who heads the investment services at Sundaram Finance Limited, part of the TBS group of companies. He serves as a portfolio specialist and and subject matter expert to educate corporates and high net worth investors about their financial plans and investment policies. He brings over 18 years of experience in investment research and portfolio management. Prior to joining Sundaram Group, Rahul was a part of senior management handling corporate affairs and turnkey projects in automotive and financial services firms. He had been the founder member of Sundaram Direct, a client uh, facing arm of Sundaram Finance Group and had set up their wealth services and advisory business oh. too. He serves on the investment committee of the company as well. He currently researches on behavioral psychology in finance. Mr. Ra Rahul Jyoti Kumaran has been a rank holder in his graduation in commerce from the University of Calicut, a gold medalist in postgraduate program in computer application from RDC Calicut, a topper in management finance from Cochin University of Science and Technology. He is certified financial planner from the Financial Planning Standards Boards of India. He is a lifetime member of IMA, holds membership with the Global Association of Risk Professionals, International Association of Financial Engineers, US. He is a certified licentiate from Insurance Institute of India and has various professional certifications in the domain of investments, mutual funds and advisory from the National Institute of Securities Markets, India. His relentless mission has been to deliver the me meaning of wealth literally to the people he meets from all walks of life. Wealth comes from the word be, meaning happiness. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Ranjini. Uh... A warm welcome to uh, Mr. Rahul Jyoti Kumaran. The stage is yours, sir. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, uh, Ranji, ma'am, for the kind uh, words. And in fact, the reason why I decided to join a bit early was to also hear Mr. Magdi. I heard about this brand, which was great to sort of you know connect with them, hear him out. So excuse me that I joined a bit early, but it, that session was worth it. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Anil, sir, I'll be sharing my screen, so hope uh, that should be fine. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, may I assume that the screen is visible? Yes, it's visible. Thank you, sir. Uh, so as all good things in life and investments, let me start with disclaimers. Uh, so today's session doesn't have anything to do with uh, giving you the latest things happening in the world of investments or the hottest tip or the hottest stock that you can buy right now. There'll be no products that will be discussed. But then there is something more fundamental, which I think has a, you know, structurally very important for all of us. And that's about our portfolio. When we discuss portfolio, uh, the term essentially comes from a physical file where in the olden days we used to keep our receipts, documents, flow notes, you know, all the things that is of value and used to sort of seal it intact and stack it away so that the future generation can use it well and it's available for a record. The things as they stand right now with, uh, you know, digitalization, all the places and across our lifetime, I believe most of us would have sort of bought products, uh, financial, non-financial, physical assets. And during this course of time, how do you sort of build them into a place? How do you sort of tie them down together? And most importantly, how do you assess them? Are we going in the right direction or not? So probably that's what my endeavor would be in the next half an hour, 40 minutes that I have with all the members here. Without much ado, let me take you through that. Uh, so essentially, I'll segregate the entire discussion into one is how to build a portfolio. Second is how to assess whether the works are going in the way you wanted it or not. When it comes to building a portfolio, it is very important, like in everything in management, identifying and classifying what you have is very critical. 
how do you judge a product how do you see that this particular uh, investment product is good is it suitable for you or not and third what sort of an assets should you use and what is the contours to this so that's what we are going to discuss in the next few slides um and trust me uh, friends if at all anything that we are going to pick up from today's session this one slide will be very critical because uh, it's coming december a few more weekends on our hand and 2020 has not been noteworthy on lot of thorns but let it be noteworthy for one reason that this was a few weekends that you took time to sort of you know construct this particular part which is like building your portfolio first i would request all of you not probably now but later list down what you own in financial parlance what you own is called equity uh, our normal assumption of equity is something that we have which is uh, related to the share markets or to the stocks not necessary anything that you own is termed as equity so if you have a land in your name that's equity for you if you have gold in your name that's equity for you if you have direct shares you have mutual funds anything that title of it belongs to you that's equity similarly there would be a set of assets which you would have lent money to so that's a very strange way of actually telling you what are construed to be very safe avenues like deposits or bonds or your superannuation funds or your provident funds they are debt in essence they are money that you have lent for a periodic interest or a coupon or a dividend so uh, in total this is what your assets are when you look at these assets it's important for the third aspect and i tell you many of us sort of stumble in between to get this thing organized which is storing the proofs of all that you own uh, intuitively most of us know what we have but if i were to ask do we have a very structured way of maintaining records for each of those particular uh, listing of either equity or debt that you have had the answer could be yes and no and that's where i come uh, when in december you actually do this exercise you might be pleasantly in surprise when you stumble across some receipt or some paper which you didn't think had existed you would have forgotten about it and this exercise will help you sort of uh, get that so that itself is a very high uh, roi by that exercise uh the other aspect which is a little bit of more depth in your holding structure will be to know where will these investments finally land up to which bank is associated with this investment who is the nominee that you assigned for this has this nominee been long back put and now you need to sort of reconstruct that based on your life circumstances i think that is going to be critical and uh, it will give you a little bit of more information as to when you want to sort of do your estate planning or what you want to do your succession planning when you want to write your will trust me this one sheet is going to sort of help you a lot and finally as you keep looking at those particular investments do spend some time and check whether any of those investments have a requirement of maturity you need to submit it somewhere to get it renewed or is there a requirement for you to sort of you know sign off something for that rest of the proceeds to come please evaluate that and this will also be a good time to sort of check their annual performance and once in a year is a good time too much is too tedious too less is money lost so identifying a portfolio makes a whole lot of a job easier and like i said if nothing else this one slide is something that compulsorily i request all the members uh, to take it like a homework but it's worth it the number two part is basically classifying and when it comes to classifying there are multiple ways to classify the way that uh, i recommend to a lot of uh, investors and clients are one base it on your returns and cash flow so we will probably categorize them into two one is income assets income assets are those assets that you have which have an ability to generate periodic cash flows they tend to give you returns periodically it could be in terms of interest it could be in terms of coupons it could be in terms of dividends that you're getting it might be rental from the property that you're getting it could be royalty that you're getting anything which generates income is categorized as an income asset and anything whose purpose is basically to generate wealth it's incidental that they might give you some return for example they bought some shares it's incidentally delivering some dividends to you but the primary objective of buying that was not for income the primary objective was to create long term wealth trying to expand the value of what you had bought earlier that's called growth assets the other way of looking at it is also based on how you are holding it now within that you could categorize them into two one is financial assets which are primary assets which are occupying 80% 85% of the developed world's money 
and very soon india is also sort of going towards that we are currently somewhere closer to around uh, 45 50 percentage nationally and i think the uh, newer generation is fast moving to 85 percentage in that particular segment where assets which are paper based paper based or they have a particular digital format to it they're liquid they can be transferred they are backed with collaterals you know anything that you do in like it's a deposits bonds mutual funds nps the entire line of array of products that we do in financial services comes under the financial assets the other things are which you can touch we assess personally it is visible it's more tangible than physical assets so assets like you know land uh, some property you bought some bullion that you have gold silver some arts or antiques that you have all of them are physical assets now uh, a good way now to sort of classify them properly would be to put a matrix around it and then say as a percentage what of my percentage of my assets are financial in nature which is generating me income a financial in nature which is actually in the mark for growth which of my assets are physical in nature which generate me income and how much percentage of my assets are physical in nature but are kept for long term wealth but that will why is this exercise important let me explain once you do this this 4 by 4 matrix it gives you an understanding my next set of money that i should invest should i invest for regular income or should i invest for growth should i invest in a physical property or should i use it you know i had enough of that let me try moving into financial this decision making of choosing your next step in terms of your investment decisions will be very much related to this uh, classification part of it so once the list is ready do tend a little bit of time to sort of bracket them out and then sort of assign these four attributes to them moving ahead you will want to understand what product to go and often product is the last important decision but often we spend most of the time studying product thinking product discussing product trying to get opinions about product trying to check with references what is the latest thing that i could sort of buy there will be enough options and enough opportunities in our lifetime to witness a lot of products that will come our way but it's important as a investor as a buyer do you know your work in terms of how to assess it so while with complete due respect uh, to advisors bankers friends relatives who are advising you and i do not for a moment sort of disbelieve that they do not have your interest foremost but caveat emptor is a word which probably works best in investments and therein i think uh, the framework which i would like to sort of provide to all of uh, the members here is uh, slr which in typically means safety liquidity and returns when it comes to safety uh, it's not about how safe the money is going to be is to understand the structure you know what the structure is exactly doing you know where this money is going to get invested what is the you know person who is taking the money going to do with that how is he utilizing it how is his asset allocation happening how will he divest it when i need money when will he be able to give it back and how will he be able to give it back what is the way that i can transmit this assets to my legal heirs later these are things that needs to be foremost in your mind while deciding a product if the answers to these are ticked off and you find okay this i'm able to understand this let's move to the next because often not understanding product is the reason for permanent loss of capital most decisions in our life which would not have gone well would have been because we would not have studied that particular avenue well and hence safety ranks number 1 followed with it will be liquidity when i say liquidity is not that whenever i want money i can get it that's not what i mean by liquidity liquidity is understanding when you require money the money is available it's slightly different from on demand money and the one that i am speaking is whenever you require like couple of your goals will be happening say this year couple of your goals will be happening five years hence couple of your goals might be happening way up to your retirement age so your years of requirement of the funds are very 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 liquidity meaning are my assets available for investment for that particular period and upon that particular threshold when i reach is that money coming back to me and there are two elements here there is a element of time and there is an element of timing time means the period that you allow that investment to happen often you know when uh, the field that we work when we ask clients how much time would you like to give for a particular portfolio the common answer will be 3 years 4 years 5 years is a very arbitrary answer it's a very ad hoc answer and therein uh, the product suitability might be limited whereas the moment you say okay i need x money for the next 10 years later i will not be requiring money till then the avenues open up 
or the avenues you have to say some money i would require immediately so i can sort of partition my portfolio in between and say hey this much of money will work for short term this much of money will work for medium term this much of money will work for long term timing is also in a sense wherever you are buying assets which have volatility and equity as a category please understand volatility is inherent whether you buy property prices will fluctuate whether you buy gold they will fluctuate daily whether you are buying equity shares they will sort of you know move up and down regularly so it's important for you to understand at this juncture how are asset prices running are the asset prices uh, comfortable enough for you to go lump sum in one single shot or are the prices relatively volatile in the next couple of year, you know months or weeks or year or is it better for you to take a strategy of systematically entering staggered manner you are able to enter so decisions with regarding to liquidity is also important while deciding whether the product is good for you or not the third aspect is basically returns often it's opposite that works when we look at profit uh, the the off charts thing is how much will it give how better is than the others in fact this will come the last it is not the first in the entire framework of product suitability in returns again it's not about asking how much will this product give the returns that we look at are three pillars pillar number 1 is risk free rate what is the risk free rate that i should evaluate this product with that's the question that most of us will also be sort of you know um, fighting with um, in today's term as we speak in 2020 month of november the rate of uh, risk free rate will be more akin to what we say your tax free bonds which is like post taxes how much does the government of india offer you that rate is between 4.35 to 4.5 so anything post taxes if you are getting 4.35 4.5 yes you are equal into the risk free rate second is inflation uh, none of us need to understand what inflation is but then inflation is necessarily not a bad thing it is because of inflation that our fees goes up it's because of inflation that our you know our revenue goes up our salaries goes up our product pricing goes up a lot of thing in the economy is built around the entire mechanism of a, a good healthy inflation rate so that's important but at the same time when it comes to investment if you don't pay attention to this particular you know uh, factor it can become a clog in your entire system if your rate of inflation you are not able to assess and plan accordingly it can leave a big hole an element that you thought okay this money i might not require but i i might also require some bit confused i'll put this money in a savings bank account for some time and uh, it goes on so 3 months 6 months a year and 2 years later when i look at it my money i think is safe however inflation at the rate of 5 percentage would not match with the 3 and 1/2 percentage of savings bank account and sooner than we know we would have lost almost 4 percentage of our capital in that 2 years and that's real loss hence inflation is important when we look at investments number 3 is category rules um my often uh, advice is that never go for the best of the lot always go for somebody who is more consistent always go with something which is keeping its head above average most of the time because sooner than later something which is a performer would tend to sort of slip down sooner than later somebody who is lower right now will tend to sort of come up to a particular level it's important to understand that mean line it's important to understand that that average category e so if you investing something in equity what should be an average equity fund generate what should be an average debt fund generate what is an average deposit that can generate it's important to understand that category yield and then study this product whether this product actually matches with that is there a element where i can sort of you know work with is this safe enough for my portfolio it is liquid enough for my portfolio is it returning enough for my portfolio and uh, until you have all data with regarding to this my request is do not jump into product there's no opportunity of the century that you need to do it today take time understand this because portfolio is something that you're building for a long time to come it's important to look at these three parts of it we studied identification we looked at classification i'm also giving you an option to sort of check your existing portfolio in this mandate of slr the next part is basically correlation of portfolio now this looks a little bit statistical in nature but uh, correlation is very very critical and let me sort of give you a case study for this particular session i wanted to sort of take three asset classes uh, one being of course fixed deposits as they stand for the last 10 years how have the rates been uh how have the rates been for gold uh how has the rates been for equity and i am referring to nifty for the point of time the top 50 shares traded in india and surprisingly uh when the chart comes out uh most of us would want to look at it how much has it actually given the last line 
uh, the last column on this particular thing, which is the analyzed returns, is where our eyesight is. Trying to figure out, hey, did gold actually beat uh, equity, or you know how much was FD lesser than um, gold? Those are decisions that happen. But unfortunately, each year this changes, and that is where I would request uh, the audience to look at the graph. Now, the yellow line that you would see is the one that tracks the gold prices. The pink line that you see is the one that you actually sort of uh, align with fixed deposit rates. The uh, Orange color is something that you would associate yourself with, the equity price movement. So let's assume we are doing this evaluation in 2013, uh, when actually gold was at its highest point and equity probably would have miserably done the previous year and this year also. So this would be a time that you will think, enough of equity, let me put my money somewhere else, let me take this money out and then put it to gold. But hey, two years later in 2015, you'll find out that gold has sort of drastically come down and equity has made a good comeback from there on. And this is the reason why many of us would not even want to get into any sort of a risky asset fearing this volatility. But let's make volatility your friend. And for a moment, let's understand, make a portfolio where you have assets which are non-correlated to each other. Whenever gold goes down, equity comes up. When equity goes down, gold goes up. And the centerpiece is covered by that. So you get a fair understanding about how this works. It's a good way to look at how much portion of my money should be in what asset class and keep them distinct from each other, but have everything in your portfolio. Do not sort of isolate an asset category thinking that, you know, this is not important. All assets are important. They have a space for you. It's a matter of personal choice, preference, risk profile. How much portion should be gold in your portfolio? How much should be debt in your portfolio? That's something that is dependent on your individual risk-taking ability and the goal and the time you have in front of you. So this essentially tells you that when you do this, it is about asset allocation. And uh, I'm very sure you have read this before, but uh, frankly, in the last two decades of me operating, between individual A and between individual B, the reason why individual A would have generated more returns than individual B is not because of products, it's because of asset allocation. And that's proven by a lot of studies where it says 90% of reasons why one portfolio outperforms the other portfolio is because of asset allocation. Asset allocation in, in tandem means putting money in different non-correlated assets. It could be real estate, it could be gold, it could be bond, it could be equity, but you should have a portion of everything. It should be a sort of a, a well-balanced way which, in which you're comfortable. The, the final guideline to it is not which is the best asset allocation. The, the hallmark of a good asset allocation is that end of the day, you are able to sleep peacefully. Your investments are not keeping you awake at the night. And that's that's the sign off for asset allocation. It's important and yet it should be comfortable for you. So we looked at four elements of building a portfolio. We looked at identifying what you have. We looked at uh, classifying them into buckets. We looked at you know the SLR portfolio, understanding how a product is suitable for you or not. We understood why you need to have multiple assets in your portfolio. Now the building blocks are ready for you. We go to the assessing part of it. How to assess the portfolio and get a grip with it. Here, I like to take you first into a concept which is called laddering. Now, laddering is a concept with most of the uh, uh, managers who are practicing managers in finance, corporate finance. If you're in superannuation, you would understand that this is a technique that many finance managers use for de-risking your cash flows to put money in different compartments, different buckets. So if the company requires some money for one month, you'll put it somewhere else. If you require the money after one year, you'll put it somewhere else, three years there on, and so on. The idea is that, do we apply laddering in our personal finances, in our own investments, in a conscious manner? It is, it is not something that I need a requirement, so I suddenly search around in my portfolio and say, hey, this one is looking good, so let me take it out. That is not a conscious laddering. That is like you know firefighting. That is not planning. In laddering, the two aspects are one, on the y-axis, you will have the risk return level. Uh, it could have higher risk, and yes, it would have higher return associated with that. On the x-axis, you will have time horizon, or what we call in investments, tenor. So when you have this time horizon on one side, your entire decision is on the x-axis. You do not know all the products. What's important for you is know your time horizon. The moment you know your time horizon, you know, okay, I uh, my investment planning is from today to the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And most of us do assume for a very long life. So we are talking of 30 years, 40 years hence from now also. 
couple of your goals might be for your children or your grandchildren then it could go even up to 60 or 80 years also so please understand time is not limited to just one year or three year time is much more than that now put percentage of money that you would like to allocate in each of these tenors how much of value would you like to keep which you want instantly how much of your funds would you require for some time next year how much of your funds will you require after three years or five years or ten years put that percentage of funds today do this laddering do this exercise and trust me you will never have to face a problem of redeeming something which you didn't want to do it will not put you into a financial hardship it will keep your comfort exactly intact now for illustrative purposes i'm not suggesting that this is how you should do it but supposedly somebody is very comfortable with uh, debt products you know fixed income products and they could look at something which is cash or a short term fd or a bond or a or a government security and somebody is interested for building something out of the equity market he could possibly look at something which is a uh, arbitrage a derivative instrument to a hybrid to a large cap to a small cap you could you could build it up i'm not suggesting product acquisition here i'm telling you as an example for high risk return and tenor what sort of a product spectrum what sort of a continuum can you look at and when you look at that it's important to sort of understand three benefits that tends to come out from laddering first benefit in laddering is that you get a auto management of liquidity you don't have to plan for liquidity you will have money when you require without sacrificing returns which you can get from a long term investment so you can afford to sort of invest in say uh, a gsec yield which can possibly in the next 10 years give you something close to around 7 and a half percentage while your interim money requirement for next year is taken care by a 4 and a half percentage so between 7 and a half percentage and a 3 and a half and a 5 and a half your average returns will be 6 and a half 7 which will be far greater than just putting it blindly into a one year fd which is at 4 and a half or 5 percentage today so that's the success of actually categorizing them second part is basically auto diversification many of us don't know how to diversify or would not have paid attention to diversification the moment you put this timelines and say hey this money i would not require for the next 10 years or 15 years you know that there are a lot of options available there there are avenues that you would want to look out for that and that is where auto diversification plays a big role it enables you to invest across time and across asset classes third part is basically it smoothens the entire income flow your one year yield might be lower but your 10 year yields will be very good so when you combine that in, and plays an averaging system your average rate of return on your portfolio will be higher than your neighbor who probably is not implementing this technique so laddering is a very important technique when it comes to the superannuation guys and the pension fund managers know this but can we apply this in our personal finances is the question that i would leave in front of all the members the other concept that we all need to sort of uh, get accustomed to is the real rate of return by definition of course it's a uh, nominal rate minus uh, inflation rate but then it's as i see it it's often a uh, a battle between inflation rate and uh, rate of return both the terms you know but the way to sort of understand the long term yield always works in this way your bank rate is always inflation rate plus 1 percentage approximation the any central bank and with an exception of right now us fed and europe and couple of countries which are advanced on a regular space at least in india the central bank always looks at how do i sort of ensure that a depositor is rewarded slightly more than the inflation so that he doesn't lose his capital so inflation rate plus an approximation of 1 percent which is what technically sounds like a bank rate inflation rate and add to that the gdp growth which is like the gross domestic product of the country's rate of growth so assuming that the wpi rate is 4 and a half percentage and assuming that the gdp growth rate is 8 percentage 4 plus 8 you are talking of a 12 percentage return from equity is not something which is you know impossible but there could be years when the gdp growth rate might be too low like a year of pandemic of 2020 20 you have a year which you will probably have a gdp degrowth of 13 percentage and you have a you know a inflation rate of 5 and 1/2 percentage you are talking of somewhere close to around uh, you should be mentally okay with a 5 to 6 percentage negative in your portfolio in equity also so these are you know uh, intuitive heuristic guidelines telling you rate of return is not fixed rate of return is more relative but relative to inflation rate relative to the gdp growth rate relative to the policies that have been taken but keep this in mind whenever you look at compare a rate of return on your investments i'll take you to the uh, second place which is uh, i'm i'm very sure you would have heard about this and the eighth wonder of the world which einstein called is basically compounding 
but when it comes to compounding there's a very old uh, you know mass, you know slide where the blue line that you see um, going diagonally is your simple interest rate and the red line is basically the compounding rate so all of us know compounding we have heard compounding we seem to like compounding but we are not witnessed this enough in our investments and the reason for that is up to the fourth year or fifth year the difference between a compound rate and a simple rate is hardly visible to the human eye it's only when you reach your 14th year you see oh my compound interest is actually working better for me and by the time you reach your 20th year you find hey my compound interest rate is almost twice that i'm getting from a simple interest rate it is only time that will allow you that particular compound so the entire a uh, couple of slides back i was keeping on telling you put time ensure that you have a longer tenor for goals that you have longer tenor ensure that you are you are able to dissect that particular funds based on that works on this philosophy and that's the reason why i often tell people who take loans also a 15 year home loan is half as cheap as a 20 year home loan you save 50 percentage uh, interest cost if you take for a shorter tenor that's very intuitive that's because compounding is at work so there's no two ways about this particular quote when he says if we understand this compounding we understand that time is of essence and we understand if it's compounding in your favor then you earn it and if you are the person who is sort of paying it then probably it is not uh, something that you will be appreciating that use compounding to the best of your interest and uh, wherein let me take you to the uh, secret booster so people ask me you know what is that technique that i can sort of um uh, increase my yields better how do i make my portfolio look better how do i make my portfolio generate better cash for me better returns for me how do i make it you know larger in my entire uh, pie uh the secret is inevitably very simple let me sort of show that to you it is principal into time into returns now this looks like the high school definition of interest but yes it is sustaining that same interest that i would like you to take you back into how to increase wealth using these three factors when it comes to principal master every single rupee that you can and keep investing the formula for this is basically take into account start early as as early as you can do do not wait there is no procrastination required it just needs to understand that these products are ticked off by me i already studied this is fine start early save more than you can spend now this is like you know uh, old school thought but uh, i'll tell you that works better than anything else save more than you can spend and that also keep reinvesting it this works for companies this works for individuals invest regularly do not wait for a uh, uh, a day or procrastinate your that particular decision later on what do you have smaller bits invest 100 rupees or 500 rupees what do you have keep investing that on a regular basis and that's what it does the proverbial snowball effect small amounts tend to sort of you know accumulate together and they sort of roll in a manner that you would not have even you know imagined the second part is the time essence now time i'm definitely i'm going to talk to you about how long compounding works but more importantly is that allocate right the moment you have allocated your funds right for the right tenor yeah. compounding works the moment you do not allocate right and you put everything in one bucket at three four years this is not helping you third when it comes to return the most important point for you is to look at evaluate is my overall portfolio and i'm saying overall portfolio many of us get uh, sick by evaluating item by item and then saying hey this has not performed i'm losing sleep on this this is not not doing so item by item never look at it you will have different sort of investments some of them will do very good some of them might not do good but evaluate portfolio from the last line of your portfolio which is like total how has your portfolio done what is the rate of you know post tax risk free rate plus inflation if you are doing better than that holistically do not look at one single thing do not just look at your say your bank fd statement alone do not look at only your kmat account statement alone do not look at your npa statement alone do not look at your real estate uh, gains alone combine them together and annually look at is overall my my overall assets my overall wealth grown more than last year post tax is it better than inflation rate and the risk free rate then i think you've done a superb job and you need to sort of commend yourself for that keep these three points in mind invest regularly allocate right and see annual check up of your portfolio can do wonders to your overall financial health and your portfolio so i come to the next steps which is uh, primarily the segment that all of us should uh, keep and I, i think if this time that you spent on a saturday evening uh, like uh, uh, captain sir said 
it's important to sort of you know commit ourselves to these uh, items one go back check your investment assets that's a homework for all of us two classify them appropriately three earmark financial goals and the timeline i would advise you to do this exercise along with your spouse because together you're much better at planning things of an uncertain future fourth decide asset allocation decide amongst yourself what is a comfortable sort of division of assets that you would like to have understand and draw a ladder to diversify and provide for liquidity you should have liquidity when you require but don't block up your funds thinking that i might require and then you lower down your returns do not do that that's a very costly you know sort of an exercise that you will do evaluate products based on the slr framework and like i told you this is way down often we spend most of the time this as the first this is way down in the entire hierarchy evaluate products only after you decided all these things and uh, final put compounding to work ensure that your secret boosters that i said allow you to sort of keep working again and again and again and again review your asset annually there's nothing no excuse that should be there in terms of not taking some time out sitting with your advisor or sitting with somebody that you trust somebody who is an expert or your chartered accountant to sit along with them and sort of evaluate are we on a right track or not and that is where you know i leave uh, the audience with i'm open for any questions that you might have on anything that i have discussed here uh, i'll be glad to sort of answer thank you very much rahul thanks a lot um would you mind uh, on sharing the screen I'll, yeah thank you very much uh now it's open for questions i would request uh, audience participants to ask questions if you have any i think it was a pretty interesting session very different kind that uh, we from the management association has been hearing from the last couple of years any questions we have eminent chartered accountants as a past presidents financial you know bankers in our uh, management committee in the cma the tough task to always sort of you know address a management association is <laughs> all the things that we all do. so anyone sort of declares that i hey, have not done this is actually shows very poorly on our sense so very i true. do agree with that but this is something as individually i think it's important individually as members to sort of reflect on our own personal finances very true rahul uh colonel lisa you have a question yeah good evening good evening sir good evening rahul thank you so much for the very very informative and it is the order of the day the whole year we have been struggling for the last 8 months plus Uh, of course my question is slightly different uh, if you can uh, can you uh, touch upon or highlight some issues about the alternative uh, financial system i i am looking at something without interest okay um, so there are a lot of areas that is emerging right now in the world of investments a uh, couple of them are basically depend upon a profit sharing business models that you would sort of do couple of them are the emerging world a lot of noise is happening right now on the esg platform which is you know environmentally aware sustainable business developments and sort of you know um, things that are focusing more on people so these are trends uh, by and large but i think you know it's uh, more often if you feel you are good enough to sort of handle ventures that you can personally monitor personally sort of handle i think those are far effective ways of alternative investments than funds by themselves now this is based on my experience uh not to sort of you know turn down on various fund houses which are doing it but personal rate of growth has been far higher where you you are involved in these sorts of functions because the the format that we speak and you know uh, it's a big industry unfortunately in india it has not caught up much um, charia compliant funds i i don't guess there are any uh, that we have right now in india a uh, few fund houses like tata for instance did try to bring out an ethical fund to this extent but profit sharing model is best done either by doing it in equity thereby you know but you have to be very clear about what this company is doing it's very similar to you investing knowing the business by itself is that business uh, i am am i comfortable with this business am i comfortable giving money to this owner who would want to do business in this particular format uh, if i were to do it myself would i do this business so concentrate on those fight and ideas that you have and if you have enough resources coming in the local segment 
lose them and if you don't there is a dearth of those opportunities in uh, a place like calicut for instance look at the stock markets and you could design you by yourself or otherwise if you feel this is my requirement uh, find out a good fund manager who will who, to whom you can give a dictum these are areas i would want to sort of cut out and only go into this so that's a way to sort of do it uh, stand alone funds there is a dearth of that uh, research sir probably you know as days goes by i'm very confident uh, it will be a theme to sort of you know watch out for western countries a lot of places they have a different format of this i'm very sure this should uh, india should not be far lagging behind currently there aren't much of sound avenues that i can sort of recommend right now i hope that helps thank you rahul the only problem is no uh, do, doing it yourself is asking for too much you know because you are running from morning till evening huffing and puffing so very very difficult even you have a little jokes in the initial stage but you tend to fade away after a week or month or so i agree so I as agree. you said i think we have to look for a uh, you know a dependable fund manager because that is the most important thing because we have no dearth of fund managers but the problem i find is that you know that consistency is lacking because everyone wants some business correct but uh, more towards the customer i find uh, the percentage is on the decrease and um, very true sir so often the discussion goes in terms of returns recommend some good fund managers with ethics and principles true yeah, often often the discussion veers towards returns and chasing returns rather than actually being true to what was given as the mandate by the investor and if you are able to find somebody like that i think that's a good match that we have found and the last count we have 690 fund managers in india <laughs> thanks colonel thanks colonel uh, yeah, rahul thank a you, question yeah a question that uh, is from my side is basically yes, sir, yes, sir. Would, would you would you suggest recommending uh, investment in a startup as in one of the portfolios because if you look at today um, the startup ecosystem in country like india is catching up and you know there are huge uh, uh, you know returns that you can get on a long run if you are Uh, risk uh, taking uh, if your appetite is uh, for risk taking and if you are also looking at uh, uh, you know building your uh, you know intellectual cap- capital as well as well as your wealth uh, so what is your thought on that uh, this sort of uh, follows very close uh, you know uh, feature to what nisar sir also just now mentioned startups are a great idea and going forward i think uh, uh, india uh, the way things are getting much more easier for you to operate they are not still easy by the way It's still complex to sort of you know start a business, and I am very sure Maggie Ashraf will definitely can illustrate that better. But knowing about the startup ecosystem, that's an area to watch out for the next 10-15 years going forward. India will sort of have this structure where collaborative workspace will emerge better. You will have people who are specialists in a particular area forming their own business, and people tend to tie hands together rather than trying to do everything by yourself. So startups is a system that we need to sort of look at it. my only area that uh, i would advise is that uh, if you are in the startup invest very heavily if you are out of the start you're just an investor then be mentally prepared that one out of 10 investments will really sort of see the sky and mentally i should be ready that six of them i might not see my money back but that one will more than compensate for all those decisions that you have taken but that that ability to sort of take failures in startups is very important both for yourself as an investor and also be kind on those people who are actually starting up so uh, run a portfolio rather than running only one if you are doing only as an investor state take 10 ideas invest uh, appropriately and then sort of be like a venture capitalist or angel funder and be mentally okay don't lose sleep saying that you know these guys fumble it's okay it has to happen but one of those guys will take your entire valuation back but if you are in the startup it's you are part of it and i think that's more of a business decision that's not only a investment decision so that's uh, the view sir thank you very much rahul appreciate that thank you uh, any other questions uh, please colonel panikar you have a question we got uh, quite a few entrepreneurs as well in cma uh, any any more question last question before we wind up Okay, I'll just ask a question, sir. Yes, thank you for that. Okay, thank uh, you, sir. I will. I am taking a different dimension altogether to this because uh, decoding has been a challenge uh, post pandemic. Uh, because what will be the sector that you take? Because uh, I was expecting 
uh, than the classical uh, decoding what you have clearly mentioned. I was looking at a different dimension, how this pandemic has thrown uh, on how you look at the dynamics of your portfolio. One thing I want to stress upon this is that there's a time gap between the investor. He knows the performance of a company, the share value of the company and the performance. It, it all linked the underlying asset to all these things. I strongly believe is the customer sentiment. Like a derivative, the customer sentiment is the asset uh, based on which your uh, portfolio should change now. Because there's otherwise there's a gap, whether it is SLR, whether it is a um, uh, whether it is a bank rate, or whether it is a it takes time unless uh, till it crystallizes. So, is there any intelligent analytics or AI analytics that can also form a di direct dimension to this uh, decoding your portfolio? Good, good observation, yes, sir, and I agree with you on this. You know, these are times when, you know, uh, something hits you really bad, that's when we actually take stock of assets that we have or investments that we have done. Uh, but often, you know, uh, the, the suggestion that I have to members is that do not be reactive of events that happen. If somebody would have reacted to a pandemic and thought, you know, it's almost like, you know, uh, a very precarious situation where the economy is going to turn off the cliff and we sort of, you know, exit from positions, a few months later, we would be sort of proven wrong. However, like I said, an annual review, an annual restructuring of portfolio will definitely help everybody. And like I said, um, it's often you know, not ingrained in us to accept failures. It's important to sort of learn that part because not all of them, all the decisions will go right. We should be a little bit more tolerant on ourselves, a little bit forgiving on ourselves that couple of calls might not go. But when I said asset classes, within asset classes, there are enough you know, area that you can choose. For example, uh, let's take gold, for instance. I'm just picking one of the easier to explain segments. Assumingly, you have decided that, say, 10% or 15% of my total assets will be in gold. Now, that's a call that you're taking. You also have understood that in decoding your portfolio, gold as an asset class works for 10 years. Now, within that, what will you want to purchase? Would you like to buy physical gold? Would you like to buy an ETF, which is you know, far easier for you to store? Or would you like to buy a gold savings fund, which you can do an SIP in? Or would you like to go with the government, gold, uh, no, gold sovereign bond? It also pays you an interest. So uh, the within an asset, there are multiple avenues for you to invest. Consciously, those are decisions based on your tax, on your risk profile, on your understanding of a product that you should take up. And like I said, uh, these are calls that must be taken in uh, specific understanding to your requirements. It's more internal. And often uh, uh, advisors or you know friends might not understand your case situation perfectly as much as you would know. And that's the reason why this particular session was done to first decode it ourselves. We are able to sort of, you know, fine tune it, put them into buckets. A lot of things falls into place. Often when that is not done, we do take this ad hoc decisions in life. I got some money, what should I do? And I buy something which is the flavor of the money. That is where we actually make mistakes. So uh, let's try this out. And I'm very sure, as I said, that uh, probably a year from now, uh, this exercise will actually sort of give you a better sense of direction as to where you are proceeding, sir. I'm not sure whether it... Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, because it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, uh, that's fine, that's fine. Right. Thanks again, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, any other question? If that's, uh, if that, if there's no more questions... That's too much yeah. to ask on a Saturday evening, right? Very, very, very true, Rahul. <laughs> it's a challenging as well, right? Uh, um, so I think uh, we will conclude. Uh, the session was phen uh, phenomenally good. Uh, both uh, Magdi uh, shared his experiences uh, uh, of the journey of how this started and uh, uh, you know where they are today. And it's very uh, you know uh, overwhelmingly interesting to know that they are diversifying into multiple product categories from uh, food delivery to another three more in the coming times, and they're growing very exponentially, pretty high. Second, from Rahul's perspective, you know it's a very uh, it's a very good. Uh, model for us to look at uh, the portfolio building up a portfolio and, and assessing the portfolio and looking at how it can be done uh, both the topics very interesting um, to conclude uh, i will request uh, uh, srinath murchilot uh, secretary to please uh, deliver the vote of thanks over to you srinath hi hi thank you uh, thank you anul uh, hope, you, hope my voice is audible yes sir. Uh, yeah uh, thank you, all of your members uh, who joined this uh, sessions. Uh, we have two sessions. One is an in-house session by 
uh, Maddy Ashraf uh, is a co-founder of Port, uh, Port, uh, Portafo. And, uh, you know, his presentation was uh, wonderful and it gives a lot of insight for the younger entrepreneurs in this region to, to you know, uh, do more challenging jobs uh, with respect to, you know, uh, uh, the new companies. Uh, thank you very much for that, uh, Maddy. And we will have more sessions uh, similar to this. Uh, our uh, uh, next hour uh, uh, main topic, which was uh, done by Rahul Jodi Kumaran, uh, uh, who's a um, head of investment in Sundaran Finance Limited, has uh, talk on its uh, uh, this investment portfolio is highly interesting. The matters like you know a liquidity investment uh, ladder, all this are uh, you know uh, a lot of insight we uh, we received. Uh, but it's it's not enough, in fact, uh, because uh, we have a very short period what we have earned uh, as of now. But thank you and uh, thank you for the wonderful session. Uh, I also uh, thanking you all the teams who have supported and uh, logged uh, uh, logged in the Zoom session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over to Captain Anil. Yeah. Thanks, Shunna. Thank you very much. Uh, before we conclude, uh, just to know all the members uh, tonight. Uh, we have an impressive session coming up on 1st of December, uh, where we have another uh, very big, uh, very good entrepreneur, uh, co-founder and uh, uh, CEO of uh, Fresh to Home, Mr. Uh, uh, Matthew, who is going to be addressing us. Uh, please uh, block your date and time, and uh, we would have another uh, session, interesting session on 1st of December, same time. Uh, th once again, thanks everyone, and have a nice weekend. Good night. Thank, thank you, sir, thank you, thank you. Uh, Rahul Ji and Magdi. We really had a good session. And thank you, Anil Balan, for hosting his program and Team CMN. And special thanks to CA Rengini Umesh, who is a good friend of Rahul Ji. And we will have more talks on the same series on the later uh, evenings. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you, sir.